my fellow cyberpunks what is going on y'all your dude sly here and welcome back to another cyberpunk 2077 news video now this one will be kind of quick so don't get too comfy as only a little tidbits of news have been popping out here and there over the past few months or so and you know it's been a little crazy usually as games get closer and closer to release more and more news starts to arrive but seemingly the opposite is happening for cdpr's cyberpunk I was making news videos a few times a week, and now here I'm lucky to have enough content to fill one video every few weeks. It's kind of crazy, but I do know that with summer approaching in a few months, E3 will be full of glorious news and updates, hopefully gameplay, so we can for sure expect some exciting things in June, which will be just a few months shy of Cyberpunk's launch date. So I just wanted to say that please do not mistake my lack of news videos as a sign that I'm losing interest. There's just not that much to talk about. And I really do not like to report on stuff that I consider to be kind of far out there in terms of credibility and speculation. A little speculation never hurt anybody, but when it stops being hopeful wishes and excitement and delves into the realm of news replacement, that's when I try to back away. So with that said, y'all, as always, thank you for watching and I hope that you stick around for whatever follows up next. So. With that, let's begin y'all. International Women's Day was on Sunday's March 8th, so thank you ladies. And as a way to celebrate this, CDPR released on Twitter their new look for a female V. Now even though I appreciate this gesture, the whole gender politics in this kind of confuses me. Months ago, CDPR said that there are no longer genders in the game, but instead you can make your one character look more masculine or more feminine, and that in the future there's no need for genders, which, you know, kind of fits into the lore. But yet, now they call this a new V female. I'm not going to dive any deeper into the topic, but in my opinion, I do kind of like the older V model. This one's far less feminine, and while it may look like more of a badass, I kind of like the fact that a tiny feminine woman can go in there next to some big buff dude and not only keep up with him, but even outdo him while keeping her makeup on point. In my eyes, it has a far more powerful feminine message and appeal than the newer model. But again, that's just my opinion, as many others seem to love the new V female model. No word on if the male version will see any kind of change, but if it does, I bet that's something we won't see until E3 or perhaps have to wait till launch. Moving on here, while we're on the whole boy-girl thing, back in my Mass Effect days, I used to love that you could take the cover out of a game case, flip it over to show Femship or Male Shepard. I'm sure there are other games that have done this, but it's one of the earliest ones that I can remember seeing. Well, CDPR is following suit. The new cover will be reversible, so you can make the cover of your physical game show the V you're planning on playing as. And moving on to the last couple pieces of news here, which have kind of been beaten to the ground by now, but let's go over it anyway, starting with consoles. The Xbox Series X and PS5 are coming out this holiday season, and since Cyberpunk launches mid-September, I believe the 17th, that puts the holidays squarely in the time zone around three months or so of a Cyberpunk DLC time frame. However, CDPR usually does things a little bit differently than everybody else, so they might stretch out its DLC plans until later on, until 2021, because holidays of 2020 will be a very hard time to release a DLC with such you know big launch titles coming out for the aforementioned consoles. Regardless of what happens, CDPR has already promised that when or if you purchase the game on a current gen system, you will receive a next gen copy of Cyberpunk 2077 for free if you decide to upgrade. So if, for example, if you're playing on the Xbox One S and you come along and upgrade to the Xbox Series X, then you'll be able to download the updated and vastly upgraded game for free. However, if you're playing on an Xbox One and then you upgrade to a PS5, that will not be covered as you are switching entire platforms. Now this is actually an amazing gesture from CDPR and it shows how gaming oriented they really are. This move will literally cost their company millions in potential lost revenue. Like other companies, <coughs> Bungie, <coughs> when I upgraded from the 360 to the Xbox One back in the day, I had to buy a brand new game along with it. So this is appreciated by not only the gamer in me, but the human as well. It's a rare move that shows you can still make millions of dollars and still keep your ethical background in the business world without being some kind of ruthless strategist. So thanks CDPR as that's pretty effing awesome. Okay, and moving on to the last couple pieces of news here, let's go over the Grimes. Just like I mentioned earlier, with so little news out there, anytime something comes along, 
that has any kind of substance to it, the entire internet pounces on it like a starving hyena on a carcass. Not all that long ago, the pop star Grimes talked about her role in the upcoming cyberpunk game, and she plays a pop star as well as an artist. Grimes plays the role of an NPC called Lizzie Wizzy. According to Grimes, she hasn't played the game directly, but instead has watched others play it for over an hour. And in a recent live stream interview, Grimes stated that Cyberpunk 2077 is, quote, going to be fucking good. Grimes let it then slip that her character, Lizzie Wizzy, is a pop star who commits suicide on stage and then is rescued, but due to the death of her body, comes back as a complete cyborg fully chromed out. She then comes back to the same stage where she tried taking her own life and finishes the show in her new body the exact same day. Pretty awesome if you ask me, and also the name Lizzie Wizzy, that's just so <laughs> like atypical of the cyberpunk universe Pondsmith created. I mean, w names like Adam Smasher, Lizzie Wizzy, Silverhand, Morgan Blackhand, I mean the list goes on and on with the names. But either way, it just keeps my hope alive that this will indeed be one hell of a game to play. On a final note, Grimes is also making original music for the game as well, so expect that to be an awesome soundtrack. But so far, that's really kind of it, guys. The console and Grimes news is a little old and kind of beaten to the dirt by now, but I haven't mentioned it in my other news vids, so I thought I'd keep these complete by mentioning it here. Oh, and by the way, guys, as I sat here typing, something else just popped up on Twitter by way of NVIDIA. They just recently released the best game streaming idea ever invented a few months ago, and it was working very, very well, but unfortunately are now slowly being reduced by publishers. But that's another conversation. Anyways, NVIDIA's game streaming service called NVIDIA Now has announced that Cyberpunk 2077 will be coming to its game streaming service on day one. And on top of that, it will have ray tracing activated as well. So for those without an RTX card or the new upcoming NVIDIA or AMD cards, depending on the date they release, this would be a great way to experience ray tracing without the need for expensive hardware upgrades. You know, at first, ray tracing was a cool upgrade but you had to look hard to notice it. Like it didn't make, it was impactful in certain ways, but in, like most of the game, you really didn't even notice it was there. However, Nvidia reworked ray tracing along with other improvements and the difference is night and freaking day. Add ray tracing and combine it with DLSS and it can make a game look more beautiful and more detailed than ever before. In the past, if you looked at pieces of trash on the ground, just for a quick example, you know, in game at least, they were always there for, you know, as authenticity. You know, like say you're in New York and you see newspapers, you know, zooming by in the wind. But if you zoomed onto that piece of trash, it would be completely blurry, pixelated, and when, while you're looking at it so close, it doesn't even look like trash, just kind of a blob. But as you back up, you kind of see how it makes the background. It was meant to blend into a scene, not something to garner attention. However, with DLSS, Things like notes on tables, I mean, little little messages, you know, little sticky notes on the wall, trash on the ground, signs on the windows, fine print, all of this comes to life in amazing detail. The latest Wolfenstein release has sold me on DLSS and ray tracing together. While not a groundbreaking game graphically or otherwise, it is by far one of the most graphically detailed games I have ever played. So far, CDPR has not officially announced DLSS support within Cyberpunk, but ray tracing is confirmed. And like I mentioned, if you don't have the card or the money to play it on PC, then the streaming service might just be what the doctor ordered. And that is about it, guys. Not a ton of news and nothing mind-shattering, but I'll take it. Hopefully, as we creep ever closer to the summer, we'll hear more about what's going on behind the walls of CD Projekt Red. But for now, that's it my friends. Thank you all so much for watching and also for supporting Sly Nation. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. Be sure to subscribe for plenty more Cyberpunk 2077 and CD Projekt Red videos as I'll be covering Cyberpunk all the way up and through launch. So stick with me as our journey is just getting started. Be sure to spank the thumbs up or down if you liked, loved, or hated the video and comment down below if you have any thoughts about today's topic. I might not reply back all that much on my comments, which admittedly is definitely a fault of mine, but I do definitely read them. And as I've said before, thank you all so much for tuning in, and feel free to check me out over on Twitter or Facebook, at Sly Nation or Sly Nation Gaming on the FB. SlyNationGaming67 at gmo.com if you wish to get in touch, which you can also do over on Twitter. Take care, y'all, and keep those eyes open for more videos and Sly Nation content coming out here soon. But until then, this is your dude Sly. And I'll catch you all in the next one.